Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It is a beautiful day to make something fun together. So you know what I really love about crafting? I love seeing things when I'm out and about and I think to myself, you know, I think I could make that. <laughs> Do you ever feel like that? It's just really neat to have the ability to create all sorts of things with my own hands and with my tools, like my cutting machine. And I especially love adding my own special touches to make it a one of a kind creation. And I know you do too. That's exactly what inspired us to make this. An adorable mailbox made entirely of cardstock. We saw one at Michael's and challenged ourselves to make our own. And I think it turned out really, really cute. And look, it opens in everything. And I want to teach you how to make one too. So come on over to my craft table with me and I will show you everything that you need to make your own little Valentine's mailbox. So I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, I just loved getting mail. I remember playing post office with my sister quite often, in fact. Of course, things are a lot different these days with the advent of computers. Lots of email, lots and lots of email, and it's basically replaced snail mail. But getting a beautiful card in the mail will always hold a special place in my heart. And this adorable little mailbox is just perfect for little cards. I even made some of those too, as you can see here. So let me show you what supplies you're going to need to make these adorable mailboxes yourself. It's really pretty easy. First, we need cardstock. I used heavy cardstock for my mailbox because I wanted it to be really sturdy, but you can also use medium weight cardstock if that's what you have on hand. That's also what I use for my Valentine cards, as you can see here. You can see exactly the type and weight of cardstock in my materials list in the video description, so there's no need to guess. For adhesive, I use my favorite new glue, Barely Art Glue, to hold my mailbox together. No, they don't sponsor me, I just love their glue. <laughs> I love this glue because you can add just the right amount exactly where you want it, so there's less mess and less cleanup, and who doesn't love that? This stuff is the bomb. I also used one mini brad, which are these little things here, to hold the flag in place. That's all you need if you're gonna make the basic version of this mailbox, easy peasy. Of course, I always like to add something extra to my crafts, so I made a cute version with rainbow hearts that would be so fun for Valentine's Day or really any day. And I'm just in love with this unicorn mailbox. I used more cardstock to make the horn and the flowers and some permanent vinyl to add the eyes and some fun pops of color all of which is completely optional, of course. Now to cut out the pieces of cardstock, I use my Cricut cutting machine and a green machine mat. It also helps to have a brayer, a weeding tool, and a scraper tool as well. And I use the fine point blade to cut these. Now, if you're making the paper flowers that you see on my unicorn mailbox, you'll also want a quilling tool to roll the flowers and a wooden dowel to shape the petals, but you can also do the shaping with your fingers. And finally, I used my hot glue gun to glue the flowers together. So now that we have the materials and tools covered, let me show you where to get this free pattern and how to make your own adorable mailbox step by step. Step one, get my free Valentine mailbox craft files. First, go to jennifermaker.com slash 371 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 371 and then click it to download a zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. I want to show you how to cut this awesome mailbox on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file that's in the zip file you downloaded to Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how. Here's what my mailbox design file looks like in Cricut Design Space. As you can see, there are two SVG files. One is for the basic mailbox, and one includes the pieces for the unicorn version. I'm going to show you how to make my adorable unicorn mailbox, so I'll keep both SVGs on my Design Space canvas. 
If you only want to make the basic version and add your own decorations, later on you don't need to upload the unicorn file at all. The first thing we need to do is ungroup all the pieces. To do this, first click over on top of the mailbox design and then click ungroup at the top of the layers panel on the far right. And then click on the unicorn design and do the same thing. The reason we ungrouped is so that we can change some of our cut lines to score lines. The score lines will make it so much easier to fold the cardstock after it's cut. There are eight cut lines that need to be changed. These should appear as black lines or black outlines in the layers panel. In the layers panel starting from the top, you can select and change these one at a time, or you can select one, press and hold down the shift key, and select the others. There are eight total in this design, including the two tabs on the unicorn horn, the two unicorn ear tabs, the folds, and the base of the mailbox, the middle of the open tab, and the tabs for the front and back doors. With all of the score layers selected, click in the drop down window under Operation in the top menu where it says Basic Cut and scroll down and click on Score. You'll notice that all the lines that said Basic Cut have been changed to Score in the Layers panel on the right. Now we need to attach each score line to the layer it belongs to. In the Layers panel, starting at the top, click on each layer and its corresponding score lines. And with both selected, click Attach at the bottom of the Layers panel. Repeat these steps until all the score lines are attached to their corresponding layers. You might notice when you attach the score lines to the outer part of the unicorn ears, the pink piece seems to disappear, but that's not the case. What happens is when you attach the score line to the outer ear piece, the pink layer moved to the back, but it's still there. You can see this if you look in the layers panel on the right. Whether you're using 8.5 by 11 or 12 by 12 inch cardstock, this project is ready to cut without resizing. If you'd like to make a smaller mailbox, you can. To do this, click Select All and use the resize handle to adjust the size altogether. It's important to select all of the pieces together and resize them all together so they stay in proportion to one another. And if you want to add even more fun to your mailbox, Cricut Design Space has many fun shapes that you can use for decorations. To see all the options, click on Shapes on the left side of your canvas. I made another mailbox covered in rainbow colored hearts. To do that, I selected the heart shape. I adjusted the size to fit my project by clicking and dragging the resize handle. You can also change the size in the top menu. Once I was happy with the size, I duplicated the heart by clicking Duplicate at the top of the Layers panel. Then you can change the color of each heart by selecting them one at a time, and then clicking the color picker box next to where you see Basic Cut in the top menu. Once there, select whatever color you like. You can use these or any shape to decorate your mailbox. Step 2. Cut your Valentine mailbox design. So when you're ready, click Make It in the upper right corner. If you're using a Maker 3 or Explorer 3, you'll be asked if you're cutting your designs without a mat, with a mat, or multiple ways. Select On Mat and click Continue. If you're making the unicorn mailbox like I am in this video, you should see seven mats on the Prepare screen. If you see any additional mats, there is a very good chance that you may not have attached all of your score lines to their corresponding layers. If that's the case, simply click Cancel to return to the Design Space Canvas to fix that. If you're using 12 by 12 inch cardstock like me, you don't need to change anything on the mats. Click Continue to select your material. But if you're using 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock or any other size, you need to change the size of your material. On the left side of the screen, click on the arrow under Material Size to select the appropriate size for each color mat. Once you're finished making changes, click back on the first mat and then click Continue in the lower right corner. You'll be prompted to select your material settings and place your material for each layer on your machine mat.
I started with light cardstock on a green standard grip machine mat since I'm using 65 pound cardstock for the colored pieces. Of course, if you choose to make this project with a different weight cardstock, or maybe you want to add vinyl to your design, then select the correct material as matches your material. Additional material options are listed under Browse All Materials. So once you have your material selected, I recommend choosing more pressure. Since some of your mats have score lines, we're going to need to add a scoring tool. I'm going to use my scoring stylus. If you're using a Maker or Maker 3, Design Space may prompt you to use the scoring wheel. You can, of course, use that. But if you're going to use a scoring stylus like I am, you'll want to click Edit Tools and select the scoring stylus so it uses that instead. Now you're probably wondering why I'm going to use the stylus instead of the wheel. And I'm doing that because otherwise I would need to switch the scoring wheel in and out for every machine mat because the blade and the scoring wheel both go in clamp B, whereas the scoring stylus can go in clamp A. So if I use the stylus instead of the wheel, there's no need for me to switch the tool in and out with the blade, and that takes less time. And I am all about saving time. So place your cardstock on your mat. I recommend using your brayer to make sure it's well adhered to your machine mat. And then load your mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to begin. When your machine is done cutting, press the unload arrow to unload your mat. Flip your mat over on your work surface and gently peel away the mat from your cardstock. Doing it this way helps prevent your cardstock from curling or ripping. Now sometimes pieces can be a little tricky and they stay on your mat. If this happens, your scraper tool is a great help in removing any little bits from the mat. Apply the next color of cardstock to your mat and repeat the steps until your whole project is cut. Step three, assemble your Valentine mailbox. Here's a look at all of the cut pieces. First, we're going to attach the body of the mailbox to the base layer. Gently fold the tabs of the base layer along the score lines. You can use your scraper to help get a nice crease. Apply a thin line of glue along the outside of one of the long side tabs. Before applying the rectangular piece or body of the mailbox to the base, check where the small hole cutout is and position it where you would like to later attach your flag. Align the edge of the rectangular piece to the base tab and hold it in place. I held mine for about 10 seconds, but it may vary depending on the type and amount of glue you use. Once the first side is attached, repeat the same steps to add the other side to create the body of your mailbox. And then once the main part of your mailbox is assembled, it's time to put the back of it on. Gently fold the tabs of one door along the score lines. The front and back pieces of the mailbox are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you use first. Once all the tabs are folded, apply glue to two or three tabs at a time. Align one of the long rectangular pieces to the edge and press and hold it in place. Repeat the process along all of the tabs by gluing a few at a time. And then when your back piece is complete, it's time to attach it to your mailbox. Add glue along the tab on the base of the mailbox and along the inside of the curve on the piece that you just assembled. Gently align your back to the mailbox and press it into place. You may find it helpful to reach through the inside of your mailbox to apply pressure from both sides. All right, now that you've got that in place, repeat the same steps to make the door by folding the tabs and gluing the rectangular trim piece in place. This time you're only going to attach it to the bottom tab of the base of the mailbox. We don't want to apply around the arch of the door or it will be glued shut. Fold the small rectangle piece along the score line to make an L shape. Apply glue to one outside section and press the pull tab onto the door of your mailbox. Choose a mini brad fastener to complement your mailbox. Poke it through the hole in the flag and attach it to the body of the mailbox and open the brad inside the mailbox to secure it in place. 
If you're making a basic mailbox, you are all done with assembly. Feel free to decorate it however you like. If you're making the unicorn, let's get those pieces added. We're going to start with the horn. Gently roll the horn piece together to shape it into a cone shape. Apply a thin line of glue on the inside of the long edge and hold the horn together for the glue to hold closed. Gently fold the tabs outward so they're ready to glue onto your mailbox. Next, let's roll your flowers. Using a paper quilling tool or my DIY quilling tool, place the outside end of the paper rose onto the quilling tool and begin rolling the paper flower around the quilling tool until you get to the end. Pull the rolled paper rose off the quilling tool to remove it. Add hot glue to the bottom of the rolled paper flower and then place the circle piece on top of the hot glue. To avoid burning your fingers on the hot glue, you can use hot glue finger protectors. Manipulate the petals by spreading them out. You can also use a small wooden dowel to curl the petals. I'm using a 1 8 inch wooden dowel to curl my petals by rolling the petals around the wooden dowel. Repeat these steps for the other two flowers and set them aside so we can prepare our unicorn ears. Glue the inner parts of each ear to the outer ear. Fold the tabs forward to prepare them to glue to the inside of the door. Now we have all of our unicorn pieces ready to attach to our mailbox. Let's glue the horn first. Add a small dab of glue to the tabs of the horn. Next, let's add the flowers around the base of the horn. You can add them however you'd like. I'm going to place one in the middle front and the other two hugging the middle, one on each side. Now let's give our cute unicorn some ears. I left about an inch and a half between my unicorn ears. Apply a small dab of glue to the ear tab and press it along the inside of your door trim. I recommend keeping your mailbox door open while the ears dry so that you don't accidentally glue the door closed. For some extra pizzazz, I glued little yellow flowers around the mailbox and finished by adding the eyelashes. Step 4. Print Valentine's Day Cards I've also included a cute set of Valentine's Day cards to use with the mailbox. There are seven different print then cut designs to choose from. You can upload one or all seven and print as many as you'd like. If you'd like to use them, here's how. In Design Space, on the left side of your screen, click on the Upload icon and then click Upload Image and click Browse. Locate the folder titled Valentine Mailbox Cards Jennifer Maker. Click on that and you'll see all seven designs. Select the one you want, click on it, and then click Open. Back in Cricut Design Space, choose Complex for the image type and click Continue. On the next screen, there's nothing to do, so click Apply and Continue on the bottom right of the screen. Next, click on Print Then Cut Image and click Upload on the lower right. Under Recent Upload, select the card that you just uploaded and click Add to Canvas on the bottom right. The card will now be in your Design Space Canvas. Here you can resize the card to any dimension you like by either using the resize handle on the lower right of the bounding box to make it smaller or larger, simply click and drag on the double arrows, or I prefer simply entering the dimension in the top menu under Size. Enter the width and the height will automatically adjust. I will enter 3 inches and now I'm ready to print. If you want to add more cards to the canvas and print them all at once, you can do that now. Just repeat the steps above. If you'd like to print multiples of this card, simply click on it and then click Duplicate as many times as you'd like at the top of the Layers panel on the far right. Once you have all the cards ready to go, make sure you have the right machine selected at the top of the canvas and then click Make It. Print and then cut images can only be made on the Explorer and Maker series of cutting machines, not on the Cricut Joy. On the next screen, the Prepare screen, there's nothing to change, so click Continue. Now on the Make screen, it's time to print. Click Send to Printer. The Printer Setup window appears. Make sure Add Bleed has the green slider, and the bleed is a small border around each image that allows for more precise cutting. The bleed is trimmed off during the cutting process, resulting in a nicer print-than-cut image. 
and you can continue by clicking print. However, I like to change the slider to green for the use system dialog box before I click print. You'll need to minimize or move your design space window to see the print dialog box. It pops up behind design space. There is a chance the system dialog box will not work on all printers. Each printer is different, so consult your printer's user guide for additional support. In the system dialog box, I will select best for the print quality and make sure your material is loaded in your printer and then click print. Once printed, make sure to let the ink dry to avoid any smears before the cutting process. This is what my printed card sheet looks like. You'll notice a black box around my cards. This is called a registration box and it is used by your Cricut cutting machine to tell it exactly where to cut your project. You want to be sure you see this black box all around the image that you're going to be cutting. Now that we've printed our cards, let's click Browse All Materials to select our base material. I'm using medium cardstock for my Valentine cards, but make sure to select the material that you're using if it's different. Under Pressure, I always select More to ensure the best cut. Now place your printed cards on a green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer if you have one to make sure the cardstock is well adhered to the mat. Load the machine mat into your machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. The machine will use its sensors to read the registration marks and then it will make the cut. If you have any issues with print then cut, I recommend going to jennifermaker.com slash print then cut for tips. When the cut is finished, unload your machine mat, flip it over onto your work surface and gently peel the mat away from the cardstock. And there you go, an adorable Valentine's Day card to give to your friends or put in your mailbox. Step five, show it off. Here are my finished mailboxes and I love how they all turned out. Remember you can use the basic mailbox design and decorate it any way you like. Add cutout hearts like I did, or maybe other shapes like stars to make a 4th of July version, or shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. I cannot wait to see all of your creative ideas for this mailbox. Now, if you have any questions about paper crafts or cardstock or any questions that didn't get answered here in this video or really anything craft related, because I love to help, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And, there's more. If you'd like to learn how to make more 3D paper craft designs, check out my video on how to make 3D heart lanterns and my tutorial on how to make 10 different Cricut paper flowers, which would look so cute on that unicorn mailbox. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.